Hello, Forefront fam. Welcome. Welcome, my friends. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to meet and greet session number three, second to last one. We'll have the last one later today. This is going to be a session packed with beautiful, beautiful finalists. We have five instead of the regular four. Uh, so we'll probably go a little bit over our hour and a half. Uh, but let's get started because I'm really eager to dive in, friends. Let's see who's waiting in the waiting room and call in the first of five amazing finalists that you are going to meet today. All right. Let us say hello to Entes. Here we go. Hello, Entes. Hi. Hello. How are you? You're hard at work. Yes, I'm <laughs> working every time, you know. <laughs> hard worker. What's it going? All is good? Amazing. All is good, my friend. All is good. Uh, so I, I'm loving this studio that you, that you are working in right now. Uh, friends, it's my honor to introduce you to Entes. Entes, or Joan Jimenez, known as Entes, is a graffiti artist painting on the streets since 1998. He's visited around 53 cities around the world. Entes' art is focused on the Afro-Peruvian and Latin American culture of which he is part. He sees Web3 as an opportunity to put in the map minorities that have been marginalized around history and create new narratives that make the internet a more inclusive space where new digital communities can emerge with projects that search more for human value beyond the hype. So with that, my friend, and as I give the stage to you and your presentation for the fam. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure uh, community. Uh, I'm here in Peru, um, starting working uh, 24 years ago in the street, I'm starting painting graffiti and later my evolution gave me more sense about the starting the project. Cause the, pro the project started with me like few years ago. Cause I think so it's particularly important to uh, do that connection with my art. Cause I'm a, I'm a part of this community here and, and try to start in, uh, doing my evolution in, in the street art and different kind of media. This is the reason because we are here in my studio. Uh, in the back, we got uh, acrylic, here olio, here I'm doing some NFTs, uh, my cat my my different kind of techniques uh, give me more opportunities to do different kind of things. So my work uh, talking about racism, uh, the difference of classicism too, and and what's going with the Latino approach, you know, cause we are in the middle of this work, but I don't, I don't feel included in this work. Because first, the media is difficult. Uh, here, we don't got the, the same uh, technologies advanced like in USA, you know, or Europe. We are third world, so is completely different. So this is one of the reasons cause I'm, I'm here talking with everybody cause I take this, this one like opportunity to tell what's going on with the Latino people and what I can do for these people with my art. So this, the, the most important thing cause I think so, uh, the value of the projects of my art are talking about uh, the problems I got and my kids got. 
and my family get in other countries. So I think so it's important that part because the Latinos, we, we are segregated in a part in, in spaces like USA or Europe, we are different. So we are immigrants. We are no legals. So these problems is very strong. So with my project, I try to tell to the world, we are here, we are proud, uh, we work like crazy and we try to to connect this important uh, project about the faces. So this is the reason because we got this kind of different persons and different kind of brown here, right? So with that, we got a... Uh, the the different kind of uh, persons is a Latin American people, a mixed people too, actually. So we try to put these persons in the art world, in the web tree and uh, in the regular art world, actually, the contemporary art world. So that's uh, me and my background, uh, like an artist. So now we we go to the other space and we're talking about the the project. Okay, so I'm working with uh, three people. Uh, one is Luis. He follow me with the cam now, and the other person is Deox. Here is a little tour in my studio. I got. Another techniques, this uh, extraction of the wall. I got a, I did a technique to put uh, some chemicals in the wall, and later, uh, when it's dry, I peel the wall off. So this is one. The name is Strapo. Uh, and it's a cocktail, cocktail Molotov here about the problems, the struggle in in, in Latin America. This is another piece talking the same thing about graffitis, uh, a gay graffiti artist, the name is Dondi, uh, painting a train in, in the New York tunnels. So, we are here and in the background we got uh, the, the starring of the guerrilla of my project of our project actually. So the project name is Caras Latinas uh, or Latin Faces. Um, we are starting uh, this project cause I'm starting painting these faces in the street and later I'm be interested to doing in a, a, in an iPad. So with that in middle of the pandemic, I'm starting to, to work with the iPad, I'm starting to try to put my art from the street in the web tree. So with that, my gallery, I'm working with one gallery, the name is Super Chief, uh, stay uh, in New York. And with that, um, I'm starting to prove different kind of opportunities uh, with the NFTs. So now uh, I'm put all the focus in in the faces. So with this project, we we got different kind of things uh, we do in the residence. In the residence, first we do an open studio, and we're talking about in that open studio we're talking about uh, ideas with the community, with a conversation with these people and different point of views. I need different point of views for the evolution of this project. So later uh, know my, my team is, uh, the members is Luis, Deox, Ale, and Julio and Ademir. 
So we we got uh, this group of persons with me a bunch of years ago working in design, video, and photography, and assistant in, in the murals in my yard too. And with these persons, we fabricate the guerrilla. The guerrilla means uh, what's going on with the point in the street and the web tree. What is the difference? For me, it's no difference. I try to be integrate these this two uh, words in one. So I put something like these posters in the street. So I got more here. I can show you. We got ready the designs. Uh, now here we got this one. I want to see my face of my people because it's a problematic thing from Latin America. So this project talking about this kind of different problems, you know, This one talking about uh, the brown power. I talking different kind of things because I got many projects in one project. So we got the these persons in the street and actually in the web tree too. So the project consists in. All these people of the of the guerrilla team in our countries, because we send this design to to you to print it, or we can roll it and send you to every person, every person by the the NFT to put it in the street or in his room. And with that, we create uh, like a map, like a Google Maps. Uh, but we put graffitis and actually the posters and the stickers. We create all like, um, it's no merge. It's like art ex exclusive for the Web3 world. The guerrilla is the white list, actually. So with that, we got uh, all this community of Caras Latinas uh, with the posters, ready to do the, we, we do the paste up course. We do the um, stencil course too. With that, we prepare these people to go to the street and paint these faces or Face up these faces in the street. Uh, we we send all the information, the detail, the details, um, the the PDF for the stencils is is easy if you press a button and you print that and later with a cutter. Uh, do the stencil and go to the street and paint it. So with that, we are form part, we are be part of this huge community, a huge family for me, you know? So with that, in middle of the, of the residence, we do lives, um, we do videos, me painting uh, graffitis, me, uh, doing the posters, me doing the stickers, actually doing the faces. We create this part like with with the residents. We choose uh, three persons of the community to do his faces for the for our um, NFT. You know, so we included the community inside. Uh, our um, NFTs with this this game, so we propose that to Wiley's too, to the guerrilla team too, because with that we be integrate and we put it in the 
in the Google Maps too, uh, in the Caras Latinas maps, uh, we included uh, these faces too. So if you live in in China or LA or New York or Peru or whatever other country, um, you buy the NFT or you form part part of the guerrilla team. You got your poster. Actually, you got the opportunity to real stay in the collection of the NFTs we made. So with that, we, we started a, like a new movement. I'm trying to do that. Not only art, not only Web3. I think so we are trying to change a little bit the world, the opportunities for us, for everybody, different kinds of uh, communities, actually. It's, because Latinos got, uh, we got this this songs is is crazy, but we got for people from Africa, people from Spain, people from China, people from Japan. Everybody's here, so we are we got that in our bloods. So we are the world too, and with this project, uh, we do in the residence we do. Uh, 50 faces and you can see the evolution of these uh, characters you be part of this project with the uh, participate and be part of the guerrilla team so we are here in Peru we are Caras Latinas team Amentes and thank you very much for your time and it's a pleasure for me That was amazing, and Des, thank you. Thank you so much. The chat is blowing up. Uh, the chat is blowing up with love and enthusiasm. Thank you so much for sharing that. So this vision, I love this vision of you marrying, like you said, you, you don't see a separation between Web3 and in real life. Your, your art is bringing these worlds together, unifying these worlds. So you're gonna be sending out these stencils and posters to people all over the world and they will be geotagging. They will be going out into the street, sharing this art, geotagging. You're going to have a map of where all the Garas Latinas are being, are being put up by the community. And in addition to that, you're saying you will actually paint the faces of three people in the forefront community as a part of your NFT project. Is that right? Yes, that's completely Amazing. the truth. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's uh, absolutely I love this vision it's just uh, it really really just touches my heart my friend thank you thank, thank you so you much for much. sharing this and now I'm going to be quiet I I'm going to be quiet because I want to pass it over to the, the chat room and this to see if any of our friends have any questions uh, I'm seeing the chat popping off friends uh, so Nate is asking in this would be great to hear about how you have involved the local community in the street art you have done in the past uh, question, the, the local community here in Peru, right? So exactly, yes. So um, I, I'm starting organizing uh, events like uh, ten years ago uh, with a uh, Latin America artists, included Peruvian artists too. So with that, I know all the community. So we involve actually Del paint graffiti, the other people paint graffiti too. So. We are a part of the community. And I'm a part of uh, the crew, the MGC. Uh, is the most uh, old and uh, better crew here. So the community is part of the project because I paint in these people. I, it's these people. I see these people every day because I live here and I love this 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 country so these people stay with me in in the in the papers and actually uh, these people help me with uh, pay, uh put the posters in the in the street with the guerrilla team you know so i'm uh i'm i'm trying to include all my friends like 15 or 20 people here uh, be part of the project with a guerrilla. So with that, 
we try to show a little bit what happened with the street art and graffiti here and what's going on with the with the street the real street art here amazing thank you Enthes. and a question from rachel so it sounds like you've you've involved your family your local community there in the street art that you've been doing how have their reactions been when you've tried to bridge them to web3 have you been able to bring a lot of your community onto web3 what have what have their responses been to that I think so the response about that is is completely unexpected because I don't I don't paint like a real person like my face, you know. I do like a character is the name from 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 the drawing. So with that we got an another creation is no like a regular person maybe it's your your uncle your son your father or whatever other person but you create this connection with a latino face for sure because it's the source and um, the persons from here when look my art feeling that that kind of energy and give me the opportunity to tell like yo paint my son paint my my little kid or my mother send me photos you know like this kind of connection stay on the air every day with my art because here and in latin america the people know me because this is part of my my discourse is not only my art is like is like me it's entes you know that's all the the idea i think thank you entes thank you i want to pause uh, and see if there's any more questions from the fam feel free to drop any questions, anything you'd like to say in the chat, or you can also press the live call in and we'd be happy to jam with anyone there. I'm seeing if I'm missing any questions here. While we're waiting, and Des, maybe I'd like to ask you to dig a little bit more into one of the questions that we had as one of the five prompts that we wanted each of the finalists to uh, to answer. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe you and I spoke about this privately, but what is what is the creative challenge that keeps you up at night? What what is the creative challenge or, or question or riddle that keeps you up at night? And I know you and I jammed about this. You told me about your, your great inspirations, the books that you're reading. Mm -hmm. I'd love if you could share a little bit more about that with the fam. Okay. So um, now I'm starting reading again the Emory Douglas uh, book about Black Panthers. Uh, this is one of my inspirations. Actually, Malcolm X, the... Nicomedes Santa Cruz, this is a poetry from here, is a poet from here, sorry. Uh, he talking about, it's not exist the difference. We are persons. So this kind of books and this, this kind of poetry give me that. This, actually I got the book here. You, you saw it, the book? Mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, Panteras Negras it's like Black Panthers so we got here uh, different kind of posters of these people and the the newspaper made with the discourse about the black persons and the problems these people got and the idea from Carlos Latinas comes from this kind of guerrilla and uh, 
and political thing happens. So for me, um, all my energy about the project is comes from exactly from this book or the indi new indigenism from Peru of 1920s. The artists give me that uh, deep uh, discourse about what's, what's going on with me, with my color of my skin, my abilities to talk and drawing, what is the media? Why I do why I do that? Why I get uh, the opportunity to talk for more people? Why my decision, like artist, is not talking only about me? It's like us, like everybody, you know. So I think so. It's a good opportunity to 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 tell what's going on behind the scenes with with my creative life. That's beautiful, Intes. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much for bringing your energy, your ideas, your passion to the Web3 Creator Residency finalist round. It's been an honor, my friend. I have to say goodbye to you, and I have to welcome on another one of your colleagues, but we will see you again. Thank you, Intes. Thank you to the entire team Thank over you very there, much, too. Caroline. Really appreciate you. We'll see you appreciate around. appreciate it. Bye-bye. Peace. Bye-bye. Take good care. All right, Forefront fam, that was the one and only Intes. And now we're going to go into the waiting room. And as you're still online with us, I want to make sure we... There we go. Okay. Let's see here. Why don't we now go, friends, to... Let us go to Nico. Nico, my friend, welcome. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? Hello, yes, how are you? Uh, I'm good, yeah, I was literally just about to retweet this thread and then, yeah, not now, probably retweet later. <laughs> I got, yeah, I called you in. Just, yeah. uh, just a very, a, a shock to the system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, my friend, it's, it's an honor, honor to welcome you. Forefront family, please meet Nico. Nico is a multimedia artist, interactive programmer, and DAO contributor. Nico was previously at Snapchat creating interactive AR content. Now Nico is collabing with CityDAO. Nico is passionate about reimagining the communities and cities of the future. And with that, I am so stoked and honored to pass the stage over to you, Nico. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the intro. Um, so uh, I did prepare some slides. I don't know if I can present right now. So I would click share and I just share my entire screen. Yeah. Can you see? Yes, I can see. Yeah, okay. Um, whoops, not this share. So, yeah, so hi everyone and hi Forefront family. Um, I've been really excited about this residency um, for the reasons I will talk about it later. But um, yeah, as it was intro, um, I'm really passionate about building communities and cities and living spaces. And for like for, for the future, that's different from existing communities and living spaces. So I've been really thinking about um, some of the approaches that I can do as an artist to um, uh, like accelerate or uplift this whole social movement of building solar punk um, living spaces. So uh, I came up with this idea called Jugar, and I'll explain what the name means later. But it's basically an artistic prototype for a solar punk village. And um, the whole idea and kind of the starting of my journey to pursue the solar punk vision started off um, earlier this year when I was participating in this project that's more or less like a hacker commune where uh, a bunch of people with backgrounds in creative tech got together and then just built like a temporary living space in the desert to live together for like three months. So um, it's like like... Burning Man meets um, Hackathon meets like some sort of like grassroots college. 
and um, the whole project was completely free. It was very much like self-organized and everyone that came in brought something new to the table. And we all collectively built these structures together. Each of us were in different teams. Uh, let me see. We we're in different teams. Um, different tribes that handled different tasks. There's the compost team that handled, you know, like waste management. There's solar team that handles all the solar power. There's Wi-Fi team that makes sure that we have 5G Wi-Fi so we can all work together. And there's a general like other construction side of things. So it was really like a collective um, building experience and um, a hacker experience, a um, hacker experiment. And um, but in through this experience, we just all had a really amazing, almost transcendental um, experience with a really diverse global community. People flew in from all over the world, different sides of the country, and then we got together, built this thing together, and then within the structures we built, we had all sorts of workshops from about from AI workshop to like 3D modeling, to you know singing, writing songs and singing, to meditation, yoga, ceramic, just like wood cutting and how to DAO and um, basic crypto 101 and you know smart contracts. So any like like it's just a, such a wide range of interesting topics, and um, so this experience really inspired a lot of things um, about um, the kind of life philosophy that I would like to pursue as an artist, and um, kind of like inspired me to pursue this um, this ideology of a solar punk type of um, lifestyle. So what, it, what exactly is a solar punk kind of lifestyle? And solar punk really has been um, just um, mostly a sci-fi art movement where it advocates this kind of high-tech, low-cost way of living. And um, it encourages this kind of um, DIY maker, planter, builder culture of a bunch of people coming together and build the civilization that you dream together. And it also emphasizes the importance of communal living. So it's like we want to create spaces for communities to come together and using cutting-edge technology to solve um, to create sustainable solutions for living. So things like recycling, upcycling, and things like um, like planting organic gardens. And then, you know, I, uh, I'll get to the details about that later, but this is pretty much the ideology of um, just the whole solar punk culture. And ever since I found out about this culture, I've just been like all in, into this culture. Like my, my mission is to make this a reality. And I want to, you know, like to do anything I can within my power to create as many like art pieces, living sp spaces or narratives about this culture. And, um, and a while ago when I was uh, browsing through one of the region kind of um, telegram, this, gra this graph was shared and it really resonated with me. I was actually thinking about something super similar about this and then later I realized there's actually you know, a study done by this, a best way to, for people to find a reason for being, like the meaning of your life, is to combine these four aspects of um, your life. So like combining what you love doing, what you're good at, what, what, you're good at, what you can get paid for and hopefully recognized for and what the world needs and then find that like tiny tiny cross section is um kind of like a good way for you to balance out like what you should dedicate the most amount of energy into and before this i was mostly struggling with um the like struggling with like finding a purpose into the stuff that i want to work on my background was you know a digital artist, I worked in AR and Snapchat for a while, and all these things were like fun and cool, but like sometimes I feel like there's a missing of a purpose. I was like, oh, like I don't know if my art is making the world a better place. How can I make sure my art is making the world a better place? So um, finally, when I found this Ikigai, I think, um, and like it was just brought by like my interest into sustainability and interest into community building and also my expertise into building digital art and putting all this together and that's what became the concept of this project jugar so jugar's mission is to create an artistic prototype of a solar punk smart village and the north star of this project is to promote solar punk as a lifestyle and a social movement and bring these ideas to reality and um so Jugar, this word comes from, it's an in Hindi word, and it refers to a non-conventional frugal innovation as a hack. So when people didn't have, let's say if they didn't have like um, a lot of um, like social wealth to build like, 
a really advanced car and how do you like use the local resources you have to hack into a car that can fit like 10 people on a motorcycle so i found this concept to be just super amazing it's so like it has so much ingenuity and so much creativity but it's also so overlooked by our uh, like standard society where like when we see like life hacks like this we think oh like that's just like cheap or that's like broken or that's like lame well like i think the life hacks like this has you know, very much of a punk kind of a statement into doing this kind of stuff. And that's why I chose this name, Jugar, as this, um, this project. And going back a bit to, like, why, you know, why this is important, why, and, um, like, what, what, what is, the, like, the original cause of um, wanting to promote the solar punk kind of um, ideology and wanting to work into this kind of um, narrative. And I've summarized the why into three kind of crises that we all might have experienced at some point in the, of our life. First one is the collective existential crisis, where um, a lot of people who are kind of what we would refer like pl being plugged in the grid or like working on the treadmill, like are feeling semi-stressed about their life. And then they experience like a high stress, low purpose kind of corporate lifestyle. And um, a lot of people are searching for meaning, living like living in urban centers and working on jobs that they don't care about, but they need to work on it because they need to, you know, they need to live, they need to eat. So um, that's one of the crises. And the second one is the environmental crisis, which, you know, I don't think I need to explain this too much, but we are, you know, consumer goods, using of petroleum, using of non-renewable energy, all these together are really, you know, creating a lot of like environmental problems in the world. I grew up in rural parts of China where like, you know, I think until I was probably like 14, 15, I have never really seen skies that's like pure blue. It's always been gray. And I always grew up like thinking that the skies should just be gray until when I moved outside of where I lived. And then I realized, oh, it's actually because the places that I lived was heavily, heavily polluted. And then that's why working on things that can, you know, even create a little attempt to solve the environmental crisis while we all face is something that I really, I'm really super passionate about. And the third crisis is the economical crisis, where, you know, t going back to collective existential crisis, we have a huge wealth gap in this world. We're like the top 1.0.001% 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. have incre incremented like a massive amount of wealth and without being willing to redistribute that to the rest of the world. So how can we... So, you know, like, how can we, what are some of the, like, all these problems are just so massive and so huge for any individuals and organizations to, to, to solve. So um, what are some of the things that we can do to, like, kind of aim to address these issues all at once? And um, one quote that I believe strongly, and which is from one of um, this author called Buckminster Fuller, and he's known as a hippie scientist. He's a scientist that also believes in a lot of, you know, like hippie ideologies. And the things that he said is that you will never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, you need to build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. And this is something that I um, like personally feel really passionate about. And so the solutions, the attempt solutions for all these crises that we were talking about earlier is like, um, can be listed into like these three parts. So to address the existential crisis, maybe we create local communal living spaces for close-knit communities, and uh, these communities can become our mental health support networks for individuals. So we have a sense of belonging, we have a sense of family, we have a sense of doing things together with, you know, with a local community. And to address the environmental crisis, maybe the way we live through like the roots of our, life, of our lifestyle can be more engaged into a regenerative kind of ecological infrastructure with advocating things like community farms, locally sourced food and water, and promote compostable materials using renewable energies. So all these good stuff. And the, the last one, the economical crisis, can be addressed with creating more resilient living situations that alleviate social financial pressure, pressure by providing solutions on DIY infrastructure. So going back to what Jugar meant, it's like, yeah, if we, we don't have enough money to, to buy like expensive houses in city centers, maybe we can go off-grid and build our houses ourselves and create, you know, like very 
very、um, humble ways of living, but in a way that it fulfills all the basic needs we need、uh, we have as humans. So things like shelter, food, water, you know, waste system. So, and these are kind of the general、um, like、um, vibe collection I've been looking at in terms of、um, promoting the solar punk future. One of them is actually from、um, Marcus's project, which is something that I've been, you know, really excited about. But like they basically created this project where they use super、uh, minimal amount of building material to create affordable housing solutions for others. So this, along with an idea from community garden, idea from. Earthship design and biotexture, and kind of like started out as、um, I started out mapping these as the future vision for Jagar, and、um, so this is a I don't know if I have time to cover this, but this is like an anime about like a solar punk manifesto where it portrays a really beautiful collective、um, kind of like community operated.、Um, Vision for people to live in a high tech, also like environmental friendly kind of lifestyle, and、um, so. And to summarize solar punk into like a few、uh, kind of、um, really important I- ideology, I'm just gonna go over this really fast. First, it's regenerative, so regenerative ecolo- economically, ecologically, emotionally, and managing resources、um, in a way that、uh, we don't really drain the resources, but we create resources that regenerate itself. Second, it's resilient, meaning that you know, like most of the necessities are sourced locally. So if something happens to China or Russia or the global supply chain, we are not gonna go rush to grocery store because we don't. Don't have stuff to eat because we grow everything locally, and the third part is sovereign. So because these communities are encouraged to be decentralized, each community would have their ability to create their sovereign to be a sovereign entity, which means that you. You live among group dyma- dyna- dynamics that's harmonious, but also without、um, being like interfered by like a, a, a like a like a greater scope political or narrative or religious narrative of a nation state. So you, as local community, you're free to believe whatever you want or live in the lifestyle that you see fit. And then the last part is inventive, which is high tech. So instead of Instead of asking us to go back to rural lifestyle and all become farmers and spend like all day every day farming and weeding and feeding animals, we want to create high tech solutions that can solve these、um, time intensive farming work that allows us to you know be more efficient at growing things, be more efficient at gathering resources, so our time can be freed to chase and our personal passion like creating art or doing you know other things. And、um, so going back to Actually, building the village. So, what are some of the things that we actually need to build?、Um, one of the really good、um, example to look at is Maslow's hierarchy of need, from basic needs to psychological need to self fulfillment need. And to break that into concrete items that can be listed on a village, we start from the basic food, water, energy, shelter, waste management, going a level up to art, music, dance, creative technologies, communal activities, yada yada. Going a level more up to like meditation, yoga, spiritual spaces. Places for personal growth and learning and innovation. So、um, I, I put together this mental map, and I think I can show it on Figma, where like, oh, if we want to create an ideal village, what are some of the things that's necessary、um, to address the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and、um, what are some like some of the actual elements? So we get started with the residential housing, which can be you know created in a really beautiful, cute solar punk. Um, style, and we have collective rainwater tank that gathers rainwater that can be used for the residential housing. We have a compost waste station that collects human and food compost, and and then turn that to soil that can be used for the food forest. And another part can be turned to biogas that can be used for、uh, cooking. And we have we have a communal kitchen that will be able to support a solar punk cafe for people to co-work, use as library, and also eat and gather, and um. In addition to this, we're gonna have an, a re- regen- renewable electricity grid connected to the entire eco village, mostly using solar power and maybe possibly wind if the wind situation allows. And then all of this can be also used to support a creative workshop, which we use to build the actual village. And、uh, I don't know how much time I have. I'm sorry, I have a lot of content. And so the art style is gonna be more or less、um, into the art that I've been making. So this is kind of the art style I have. I use combination of Blender, Substance Painter, ZBrush, and Unity to create these virtual worlds. So I very much want to first create like a virtual prototype of this village before we do anything in the physical world. And the four-week game plan is before that. I want to prepare as much as I can. And through the four weeks, I basically just want to start start 
sketching out these building designs and then making them um, and then like you know build them actually with 3D modeling softwares and then add materials textures and in the end create like some beautiful renders of um, what this village would look like uh, in a virtual space. And then in the end, so these are some of the sketches I've been creating. I'm not super satisfied with them yet because I think they can be a bit more crazier, um, but they are what I have so far. And I've also been um, drawing some potential characters as solar punk characters that like people that wear like these, you know, like utility jackets, people that, you know, like kind of are these like hacker farmer hybrid. And then, you know, like imagine that these characters working around this environment. And then in the end, where the 4K budget is going to be spent, aside from creating these renders, um, I have a continuous project, which is a research project that um, try, attempts to map out existing communities and eco-villages that's um, building in, in terms to support this um, solar punk narrative that so we have like have collected like a list of communities that's creating within this um initiatives and then list of governance models that some of these communities are, um, are creating and a list of like articles that's writing about the solar punk movement but basically we have a bunch of volunteer uh, researchers that's working on this project together but if I will be able to get any sort of grant I would love to compensate these researchers for doing research um, that promotes this whole ecosystem of solar punk sustainable villages so um, yeah that's my presentation. I don't know how much time that was. And thank you all for listening. And if you have any questions, I'll be here to answer that. Incredible, Nico. I, it, I'm uh, hard to even know what to say. I feel like I've just, I've been on this journey with you that is like centuries into the future, like condensed into 20 minutes of your love, uh, sun-filled energy and enthusiasm for this vision. Thank you so much for the, your, the beauty, the warmth, the courage, and just everything that you articulated here. It gives me hope for the future a million fold to know that there are human beings like you dreaming and imagining. Wow. Um, the chat, the chat, super excited is, is super excited, losing their minds. Uh, incredible, love, love, bullish on this future. This is so powerful. The forefront fam is loving this. So forefront family, here's your chance. If you, I know it's hard to to even know what to say after after being given a vision like this, but if you can work up some questions, some thoughts, even some feedback that you could give to Nico. I know she would truly appreciate it. Nico, this is just so beautiful. Thank you, my friend. Super excited, wants to know, this world needs it so badly, your vision, Nico. What is the biggest bottleneck? Um, I, I don't know if there's a bottleneck, but um, I, I kind of just want to um, move this. Uh, I guess the biggest bottleneck is we really want to think about um, the why before we actually get to the how. So for the past few months, I've been really just thinking about, okay, like, why are we doing this? And um, I, I, I do want to see a world where, like, you know, like, we can, there can be a collective social movement of people wanting to live more sustainably in communal, in communities and then among nature. And I think that's what a lot of people want because, you know, that can bring you, like, just so much more fulfillment and joy. And um, I, I've been really thinking about, like, how do we, like, get to that vision? And, like, you know, and so I think right now the the bottleneck or I wouldn't say it's the bottleneck but the steps is like to map out the incremental step like one two three how do we like start from somewhere small and slowly get there so um I guess my, my current um, vision going back to like the Ikigai graph is like, okay, like I want to be um, effective and impactful in a way that I'm best at. So like, because of my background is the digital digital artist. So maybe like my job, maybe my role in this collective effort is to like just make art and make graphs. And maybe um, someone else's role could be like, you know, the scientist and make analyzations and then draw data. So um, I think, I do think that this is a collective effort. and. Um, um, I, I, I think right now it's it's also like a very ambitious collective effort. So right now I would just say um, 
the bottleneck is probably just to get more and more people to be、um, on board with this vision. And in order to get more people to be on board with this vision, you have to first like describe what the vision is. <laughs> so,、um, so that's kind of something that I've been trying to do for the past、um, few months. And、um, And then before that, you have to make sure that this vision does create a positive impact. You know, like because there's research, there's research that、um, like can say, oh yeah, like we don't like as a as a global entity, maybe we don't have enough space to feed enough people in, with organic food. Maybe inorganic far, factory farmed food can actually efficiently feed more people than the organic food approach. So like, how do we actually scientifically find out if this is actually being effective? Or if this is actually creating good to the world, so、um, there's a lot of these questions that I think、um, just take some time for us to map out. First, we need to make sure that this is actually creating good. We don't want to like believe that we're creating good, but actually accidentally creating something that's also wasteful without even realizing it. And、uh, secondly, and、um, it. The challenge is to just describe this vision as in a more concrete and also exciting way to the public, and.、Um, So, so, so my my idea on how to solve this is、um, by、uh, through this 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 project Jigar, is by creating these renders first, and then also like create an interactive website. So like the the graph I was showing earlier, you know, with the the community residential housing, water tower, biogas, and everything. Imagine if you go to a website and then you can see a little village like that. So I I think that will be a really great way to explain this vision. And if we can get enough momentum, maybe the next step would be just like accident, not accidentally, actually physically buying a piece of land. So and that allows experts in permaculture, experts in solar power, experts in building design, architects to like. Gather and be here together, and then like build this thing as a prototype, and to open source this、uh, formula, so to showcase to the world, saying how sustainable living, sustainable low cost communal living can be done, and this is how we did it, and then that's why we want to encourage everyone else to do the same. So that's 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 the the rough. Blue,、uh, like like vision. I don't know. I think that's may may change at some point, but、uh, like that's how I I see how the, all of this can work together. Amazing, love that, Nico. And you, you, you mentioned that being able to convey this,、uh, this vision,、uh, and excite others. You have that down pat. So I hope you're doing other things besides being an artist and doing your digital renderings, because this is this is just a、uh, just such a beautiful vision. I know you've inspired us. Oh my goodness, we have Dwayne the Jock Ronson calling in with a question. All right, Dwayne is calling in. Let's have him join our studio. Dwayne, are you there, my friend? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Awesome.、Uh, hey, Nico, that was、um, really amazing. Thank you for that.、Um, I I didn't know how to ask this question, but I thought I'd just.、Uh, um, so, I feel like there's so much, so many people that are really passionate about the solo punk、uh, movement. I think it's a it's a large number of people. I know that for sure. There was、um, a、uh, crypto culture and society workshop on it that Gitcoin, like、uh, Scott Moore did,、um, and there were so many people that were very passionate and energized. And after that, some of the questions that were coming up were like, "Is like can we actually make this happen, or is this just like a you know vision, some art, you know kind of an art thing, and not something that's actually feasible?" Um, and the response that I kind of got was that, yeah, this is not probably actually workable. This is just like、uh, something to inspire people, more like an art movement, so that people can get inspired. And I wasn't super satisfied with that answer. I was like, there's got to be a way that we can actually do this. If it's not grounded in reality, then it doesn't hold much water. You know what I mean?、Um, people aren't gonna be into it. So now. I felt like the biggest lack of lack was the lack of vision, and I think that that's what you just had. You had like so many detailed things about how this vision can be, and I think that can really inspire people and make them feel like, okay, this is possible. So, I have you connected with people like that? Are, are there have you gotten cross paths with people that are passionate、um, about about it? I think it's just a matter of like connecting with people out there.、Um. 
Yeah, thank you so much、um, for the comment. So I definitely agree with you when you said people were thinking that this is not possible. I was like, no, this is not true because um. So I I think there's actually people that's already doing that. Um, I can just share my screen real quick. One of probably the most iconic person that's been doing this is the people that's doing Earthships. And Earthship, it's it's a formula. I, I feel like a lot of people are probably really familiar with this. So I'm just gonna be quick. It's a bio. It's a formula called biotechture, combining biology with architecture. And then they've summarized into like basic basic needs that people need in terms of living. You know, food, energy, clean water, and blah blah blah. And the the way Earthship is designed, it's a entire ecosystem that allows every every all the waste to be recycled into like renewable like resources, and it like uses renewable Energy like、um, to be completely self-sustainable. So like this, what I the, like this is as I understand, it's not as crazy as some of the sci-fi novel, like or like sci-fi art that solar punk movement is saying. Like it's not like skyscrapers with like regenerative agriculture all vertically planted, but this is just like an existing prototype on how you can live off-grid, completely self-sustainable, and in an ecosystem that regenerates itself. It's not an easy task to build an Earthship. Some of these takes, you know, like five, ten years to build. But there are people that's doing this initiative, and then you know, there's been Earthships all over the globe. And aside from this,、um, recently I found out about, you know, there's like di- basically different forks of people trying to do their own versions of Earthship. There's this an、um, organization in Russia. He's called BioVeda, and he, his website is not the best, exp- like not the best website in terms of explaining their vision. But they've been doing tons of research on how to grow, you know, like vertical farming, how to grow like local community garden. And then they make these really like ridiculously creative little dome houses, completely out of r- materials that can be locally sourced, locally gathered. And then they bring these design to all over the world, from Russia to India to Africa. So. I think this movement is absolutely happening, and I just think that more and more people need to like know about these pe- what, what the kind of work that these people have been doing, and that's another mission that. And what I'm working on with Agartha, which is the research project to map out like solar punk initiatives, and we think that you know like we want to collectively do a research together to map out all these existing projects that's doing doing these kind of initiatives. And I think like it's just a matter of time for the rest of the world to know about and how 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 all of these solutions really exist if you just look into it. And if we can get enough momentum behind this, we can definitely you know like if we can get funding to exercise on these solutions. I think the you know it's just like the snowball would just roll to be like bigger and bigger, and more and more people would just realize that all of this is completely、uh, like approachable and doable. Awesome! Thank you so much for that answer. Amazing! Thank you, Duane. Thank you for calling in, my friend. We will say goodbye to Duane. Thank you again. We'll check the chat room to see if anyone else has any last questions. No, this has been absolutely delightful, Nico. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, and so grateful for you. So grateful. Thank you for your storytelling, and we will see you on the other side. Thank you, Nico. Thank you. All right, forefront fam. That was the one and only Nico. Thank you, my friend. We'll see you around. And now let's go into the lobby and see who else we shall call up to the stage. And just a reminder for Dwayne and Nico to, after you leave the studio, keep your tab open. You can certainly step away from the computer, but be sure to keep the tab open so that we can upload your video. Thank you so much, my friend. And Nico, I still see you on the camera, so you've got to be sure to to leave the studio, my friend. There you go. All right. Let's see here. We are going to call up Demo. All right, Demo, welcome. Hey. <laughs> yes. Hey. Hello, Demo. Hello. How are you, my friend? Hi, I'm fine. I'm talking through my phone right now. It's it's not my usual my usual setup. I'm I'm I find myself at Italy, so it's I'm really far from my home right now. Oh, well, it's a lovely,、uh, but, lovely but luckily, country oh, to be. Oh, I'm not、uh, there. Yeah, yes, yeah, welcome, yeah. welcome, but, my friend Demo. But yeah, so I'm not 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 so. Thank you. I'm not so comfortable, but I'm luckily I I I was able to talk right now. I'm talking through my phone, so I won't be able to share my screen. But I sent you some 
uh, some mark chips, so I think you will be able to, to play them, right? Yes, we will certainly cross our paws and hope that we play them. But before we get into that demo, I want to introduce you to the Forefront fam. And you wrote a beautiful introduction, so I would like to take the time to read this. So Demo or Tom is from Buenos Aires, right. Argentina. Under the Demo name, he began his audiovisual project, which started three years ago when Demo began to learn 3D. He then began merging this with his already known music production knowledge. His projects usually consist of 3D made scenarios with accompanying music, always inspired by nature and cyber organic elements. Demo considers himself a multidisciplinary artist, always willing to learn new techniques and ways to create, and he's very passionate about that. He's currently working on a collection of works that he calls YH4, consisting of several biomes and creatures belonging to the same universe, an ode to nature's beauty. This is possibly Demo's most cohesive and structured collection of works, which is still in the making. He's discovering new elements to it and new boundaries for himself in the process of creating it. Demo loves to share his knowledge, and he loves to seek for new knowledge and inspiration coming from others. He thinks that art is all about feedback between creators, and that's why it's infinite. Demo loves art and feels that it is ultimately a mere expression coming from sensitivity and willingness to give and receive through contemplation, empathy, passion. Therefore, art is a great tool for humans to be connected not only within themselves, but also between each other and their surroundings. That is Demo. Welcome, my friend, and the stage is yours. And if you need me to play a video, just let me know and I'll play it. Okay, great. Just I, I will let you know first that there's a big delay between the audio and the and and the the image. So yeah, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, well, thank you for reading that first. Uh, yeah, that that mainly defines uh, mainly defines me and and what I live for. Uh, first, I want to say congratulations to Entes and to Nico. That was beautiful. Um, I think my stuff is really related to 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 the stuff that Nico makes in some way, but but uh, Nico is like making it real, you know. Uh, I just limit it to the to the visual stuff, <laughs> but somehow it, my my main my main goal is to represent this this beautiful conversations that nature have, and I think it's all very related to community, you know, and. And this was like um, what Entes and, and, and Nico presented. It's exactly what a community is, you know. Uh, you need different agents playing different roles for, for a community to be progressive, you know. Uh, Entes with the social side and Nico with the environmental side. And if all these things are covered, then it's a great community and it's an evolving community. Uh, building uh, real stuff and and constantly progressing, you know. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I I was really attracted to to this residency uh, because uh, I never really create in public. You know, I, I maintain my creation very personal and very intimate. But at the same time, I'm just uh, a fan of uh, of showing uh, what I like to do. I always like to to present the programs I use to create to my friends and the ways in which Web three works to my friends because I feel this is a an opportunity and it and it gives me hope for a, for a for a great future. You know, for a future in which we are able to within sensitivity build a. a uh, uh, more uh, greater world that is right now and and yeah just, so I, I just want to talk about nature and how all this works and I want to share my knowledge and I want to and I want to learn new stuff I'm so passionate about that uh, and I also you know I'm just a fan of, of creation I always knew that that's my my passion and maybe I'm, I'm not I'm not such a, a a person of words. I I usually express myself through art, through art, you know, uh, through a melody or through a visual 
thing that's that's what I like to do and that's the place where I feel most comfortable with and I feel that's the the place where I really can translate what I feel inside my heart uh, so yeah I think this is the right time for me to if Caroline you can you can show uh, maybe the one that it's called Sylph uh, for everyone maybe to see what I do in a wonderful yeah I will play it. Thank you. All right, fam. Keep your keep your paws crossed. Okay, yeah, well, that was one of the works from this uh, collection I'm, I'm working on right now, which is called YH4. It's all about a, a huge universe with different biomes and there's different creatures. And it's all about a community, you know, where, where there's different creatures and, and they're playing a role which is really important for the whole, like, for the whole universe to work in a, in a harmonic way. So I, I'm, I'm so excited, so excited about the, this collection that I'm working on. And, and I, I would love to show the process in which I work on, on these pieces uh, throughout the, the, the residency from, from start to finish. You know, uh, I, I would love, I always love the idea of making like short tutorials of uh, little tricks for me to to make the sound design for these pieces or, or for ways to, to create this 3D 3D scenarios. I, I I'm just a passionate for real of, of, of showing of showing my, my knowledge. Um, my idea is to spread an optimistic message uh, where nature can can combine with technology in a positive way. Uh, for us to have a, a better future, you know. Um, I really want to be honest with, with throughout this residency. Um, I'm just uh, really free throughout me, my creative process. I don't usually work with a, with a before made um, plan, you know. So it, it was kind of hard for me to make a game plan and say, well, I, I will do this, I will do that because I usually uh, start from zero and I just let things flow and that's when the biggest things come come for me and I think that's how uh, nature works you know it's like a constant evolution of reaction to what's happening at the moment that it's happening you know and that's what growth is and it's uh, it's also a reaction between between different engines you know and that's why I think this idea of this whole residency, it's great and it's already beautiful that we are sharing all our, all our ideas and projects because it's already very inspiring. Um, uh, yeah, I also make these jewels that I have right now wearing and I would, oh, I would love to show the process of this, you know, I, I, I want to make it really personal I show the process of everything that I do, I make clothes also. And well, um, yeah, this is uh, a great opportunity, and I feel like um, this is an opportunity for us to keep this connection growing forever. You know, uh, this is all about feedback, and we can exchange forever these things and this. And things can, can grow in a way that we don't even know. Um, I want to show another piece that I made. I don't know. The, in my phone, it was pretty laggy. I don't know how about you, Caroline, or everyone. But I hope you, you can see it in the, in the most perfect way. 
I also feel like I want to, throughout the residency, make kind of exhibitions where I can show this, uh, this whole collection that I'm making in a more uh, proper way and make this whole world be uh, well expressed, you know, because it's all so connected. This, there's a lot of creatures which every creature uh, got their name and a reason why are there and yeah um, so I would like to show one that it's called uh, Underwater Underwater Kenyas uh, mm -hmm. this one doesn't have sound I want to show this one which doesn't have sound actually to show how when it doesn't have sound it it, it loses a big part of it you know uh, I feel it's like, I started making music. Uh, I've been making music for like 10 or 11 years now. And I feel things through music. And when I started doing 3D and connecting these things, uh, I feel like uh, I made a, a, a much more tangible um, thing about my, my vision, you know? And it's really important, the music and the, and the visual stuff in my pieces. So I want to show this one, which is inspired by like an underwater scenario, and that's usually really seen in my in my pieces. So yeah, if you can share that, Caroline, I'll be thankful. Yes, my friend, I will. And for the friends that are watching, if you are experiencing lag, uh, this is probably just due to the degraded quality of the live stream. But rest assured, we will be having a full recording that is at 1080p high quality that you can watch later. Um, that will have these videos in, in the perfect quality. So let's let's see if this will play underwater, Kineas. Okay, yeah, that would stay like looping forever, you know, and this would make like a constant thing flowing. Um, and there's an, an, an explanation for, for that, 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 whole, that whole situation that's happening. I won't get into that right now. Uh, but yeah, you know, I'm just a passionate about art um, and about everyone uh, creating. I feel like art is a great tool for humans to be connected within themselves and within each other. So um, I just feel like I, I want to spread this. I want to spread this message that comes, uh, that comes from love and comes from creativity because creativity is what makes us uh, going further. And it, what, it, it's what uh, makes me want to wanna keep going, you know. I always want to keep on learning. I always want to keep on teaching, uh, and 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 spreading this this message messages that 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 just come from creation. And I really want to be part of a community, which is what I what, what, why I'm finding myself pretty happy and uncomfortable with with Web three, you know, which I wasn't before, and that's really related with my art. It's a, it's a thing that nature combines with technology in this positive way where we can all be connected through here, talking, and we're in different places in the world. But our passions are connecting uh, between each other and, and we just want to keep growing and want to keep learning. Um, yeah, so uh, it's an honor talking and thank you all for, for hearing me. Maybe if, if I don't know it's, if it's worth it, if these um, videos are, are playing pretty laggy, but if they are, they are not, I would like to show another one so you can see more of what I do. Uh, there's one that is called H2, H2 Ghostfish. This one does have music, so yeah. Let's do it.
Thank you very much. Uh, well, I, I, I think that's it. I want to I wanna keep it. I, I don't want to make it so long. As you said, we're, there's uh, two more integrants left. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This uh, has been such a pleasure. Yeah. Thank it's, you. It's been. Thank you very much. If there is any question, I'm, uh, I'm open to, to answer. Uh, yes. But... Yes. Demo, thank you, thank you, my friend. Let's look at the forefront uh, chat, and we're yeah. we're seeing uh, we're seeing so many. Uh, this is so inspiring. The music was perfect. Wow, I could get lost in there for hours. Oh, thank this you. Is an ultimate compliment for a world builder. Omg, Rachel says it would be insane to hear you go through your creative process. So let's wait a couple moments to see if any of the forefront family has a question for you. I I have okay. a question. See, Come you on. and I have jammed a lot about how nature is your your foremost inspiration what is is there a, a particular creature or entity like in the real in the real world hmm. whether that's a sea creature whether it's a plant i'm interested like what what do you think is the most inspirational uh beautiful uh, na natural being that exists in our world that you have drawn inspiration from for your creations it's really it's a really interesting question um i think my answer it's that it's not in a specific one. You know, I, I, I realized that every creature and every creation from nature comes from the same origin. Mm. Um, every creation from nature has the same magic in it, you know. Uh, and that's, it's so connected with, with, with community, you know. Like, this is what, what, what creates the whole big thing. We we are one, and this is the beauty the beautiful thing about it. Nothing's be better and mo more beautiful than other thing, you know. Um, I'm I'm just passionate about everything that that nature creates, and anything <laughs> that we see and that anything that surrounds us is created by it. So, yeah, definitely, there's main inspirations for me, uh, like. Uh, uh, I'm uh, maybe right now I'm really inspired by carnivore plants and by butterflies, and um, of course by things underwater. We talked about that. Um, maybe the mystery underwater also makes me uh, really <laughs> uh, go creative with it, you know, because there's so much things down there that we don't know. But 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 you know I I don't separate the creations from 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 earth and nature. I feel like it's one big creation, and and I think that art it's it's trying to replicate that 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 love that and that creation that nature has where it's a a big thing, and I also feel like art is not an an, an individual shouldn't be an individual or an ego. Thing. we're just taking from the same place you know as nature does mm. it's the same origin where we're ta where we're taking to create i feel like these creations somehow al already exist and 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 we just open ourselves with sen through sensitivity to to grab these ideas and and display them in our own way uh, that's why I, I love to be connected with, with my unconscious part to create, you know. I, I'm a fan of creating uh, through the ideas that come in my dreams, you know. And that's usually what, what, what most of my ideas come when I'm about to sleep or when I'm, I just woke up. When I'm in this kind of unconscious and dreamy state like melodies come to, to, to my mind and, and images come to my mind and really, in, uh, and really sleepy, I, I try to, I record a voice note explaining <laughs> maybe a, a scenario that, that, that it gets in my mind and it's usually related with, with things and, um, and situations that are happening currently in my life, you know. Like here right now, I'm in Italy and I'm, and I'm seeing new, new new plants and new things and actually today I woke up and I and I had a, a dream that was really magical 
and it was really related with a with a like kind of a solar punk city as as the ones that that Nico showed, and I and I and I drafted. I made a drawing, and luckily I don't have the the drawing here, but 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 I will then work on this, you know, and so yeah. <laughs> It's Demo, you, you, you do, your words are so beautiful. You say that you're not a person of words, but you speak with your entire being. You speak with your entire heart. Thank you very um, much. This is, it's a privilege. It's an honor, my friend. I could speak to you forever, but I have to say goodbye to you. It's really nice talking to you. Thank you very much. Good luck for everyone. And let's stay connected. Thank you. Let's definitely stay connected. Thank you, Demo. That was Demo, the one and only Demo Forefront family. And now, my friends, thank you to those who have stuck with us. Uh, we have two more, two more amazing uh, finalists to welcome in. And let us now invite Structure Films. This is Jason and David of Structure Films. Welcome, welcome to the stage. Hey there. So I think, okay, so David can't join Hi. us. So I think um, okay. I, I'm on on both my mobile and another browser standby. Amazing. Okay. How are you? Great. How are you, Jason? I'm doing well. <laughs> uh, this was so delightful to see Demo and Nico's uh, demonstrations. They're really beautiful and kind of like bring to life uh, the solar puck vision that we a lot of us have in our mind. So it's yes. pretty terrific. It's truly it truly has been a delightful uh, meet and greet. So Forefront fam, I'd love to introduce you to Structure Films. As Jason said, his partner, David, is not here, but Jason is here. So Structure Films is a cinematic production company excelling in pre-production, feature film production, and world-class post-production. Structure Films are filmmakers who tell stories about some of the most fascinating and relevant personalities in science, health, nature, and technology. Jason and David are passionate about creating gripping, character-driven narratives that aspire to change the world for the better. They recognize that science is the greatest tool for understanding life, the cosmos, and the evidence-based world we inhabit. Based out of New York and San Francisco, Structure Films was founded by directing duo David Alvarado and J Jason Susberg, who met at Stanford University while they were getting their MFAs in documentary filmmaking. And with that, I welcome Jason Structure Films to the stage. Over to you, my friend. Okay, great. Um, well, this is really a delightful moment where I can uh, share like an idea that is a work in progress that we just got some really extraordinary news that um, I don't nobody knows about. So this you guys will be uh, sort of the, the the first audience to hear this. So before I begin, I have one of those horrible loops that sounds like you're in a nightmare. <laughs> um, I'm trying to, should I, can I close the public portal? Okay, here we go. Okay, goodbye public portal. Ta-da. Hello? Yeah, you can close, hey, are you, are you there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah, you're good. Okay, yeah. great. Now I, the okay. loop is gone and I can hear myself, I think. <laughs> okay, so, um, Let's see. So uh, let me tell you about myself and then I can share some of the demonstrations. So um, let me pull up uh, our series of films that we have done. I can share my screen. Sorry to be a noob. Ta-da. Ah, sharing permissions. Aha. Ta-da. You can see me, yes? Or the screen? No. Let's try that. Not yet. Not yet. Oh. Uh, not yet. Are you using Chrome? I am using Chrome. Okay. It says share. Yeah. Hmm. And then it just goes away. Um, maybe, Carolyn, I can give this to you to share. Is that is just in the interest of time? Uh, sure. I can. We can try, yes. Okay. Or alternatively, are you, I are wonder you if send there's... It, are you um, going to send it to me through... Yes, I can send you through Forefront, or I could try to troubleshoot this. Sorry for um, this weirdness. Oh, I see. Is it a slide deck? It's not okay. a slide deck. It's just, it's just, um, voila. Okay. Can you guys see this? Okay, cool. Terrific. Yes, I can see it. Okay, see. great. So um, before I share our awesome news, I just want to introduce myself. I'm uh, Jason, um, and then my production partner and directing duo partner, David, is actually on a shoot. We are working filmmakers, so we make 
uh, movies for a living. I guess we are sort of never been invited to Hollywood. <laughs> so we kind of do everything on our own by ourselves and we build films and then we pitch them um, once they are complete or near complete um, through film festivals. And for some reason, we've been working together for 12 years and we've never gone the Hollywood route. So all of our films are independently financed, independently made, independently po post-produced and then distributed. So we kind of do everything cradle to grave ourselves. And um, in the past, we've done um, a film on, uh, on, on aging, on sort of... Um, these scientists that are trying to disrupt uh, the the field of longevity by making us all live together. So it's an individual, um, or it's a tale of two individuals who are trying to cure aging. Um, and then after that, we made a film on Bill Nye, a science guy who millennials and Gen Z know, and even people younger than Gen Z know as being America's um, science educator uh, in chief, I guess you could say. And so we took him to Greenland and to some extraordinary places um, um, in order for him to fight uh, what he saw as his his mission uh, to make the world a more science literate place. Um, and then after that, we made this um, film on uh, a person named Stuart Brand, who is um, sort of the OG environmentalist. He's the reason we have Earth Day. His flag that you see everywhere, the giant globe, that is from an, an acid trip that Stuart Brand took back in the 1960s where he envisioned what would it be like if we saw the planet and we saw the whole earth that might change everything. So he um, became a, an environmentalist and then after that a technologist and sort of was the proto social media guru and uh, kind of gave us the web one world that I think a lot of people in web three are trying to recreate. Um, that ethos of, um, of hacking something together for um, the public good and not having it be um, purely walled off gardens of uh, corporate, uh, you know, mega elite, uh, you know, the internet's controlled by like six companies. And um, that didn't start out that way. It started out with this fertile, beautiful ground that people could till, much like the environment. And uh, it has become sullied, at least in our opinion, by um, the, you know, whatever happened after Web 1, Web 2 from 2005 till today. And so we see um, Web3 as an evolution that Stuart helped plant the seeds for with his Web1 colleagues. And that's um, here. So um, let me take you to a new website. So uh, earlier last, uh, I guess it was last year, we had this idea about what if we distributed our film on Stuart Brand through an NFT. Um, so what we wanted to do was create a ut utility room NFT that would allow uh, people to watch the film by collecting uh, a fractionalized version of the movie. So I'm just gonna demonstrate by connecting my MetaMask. Oh, okay. Okay, maybe I should not share MetaMask. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> this is awfully noobish. Hold on. Um, Pardon me while I grab this password. Ta-da. That feels like an amateur hour thing. Um, okay. Voila. Okay. So here what we have is a way for people to buy an NFT on fractionalized.art, or actually we had it through Mir, and then with your fractionalized NFT, um, you could actually watch the movie. So as you can see here, we had this radical idea that if people could sign in using their ETH handle and show that they had an NFT in their wallet, they could just simply sign a message like so, and then you could watch our movie. Um, so we, what we ended up doing was realizing that how we could use this powerful technology to create a, a, uh, a screening room where people could access the movie that we made. And so this movie is, this is the Stuart Brand movie. I'll just quickly um, navigate. Actually, what I'll do is I'll silence this and the subtitle. so that I can talk over it. So what we had done, this is the whole Earth catalog that um, Stuart co-created and, and co-founded. Um, and w when we did this, we realized how powerful this new technology was for independent filmmakers, something that people have long known about for artists and for musicians, but something that we could use as filmmakers to create community and to build uh, a sort of a, a grassroots movement to, for, for our films. And since we've always been outside of Hollywood um, from the beginning, even though we've done major movies with 
you know, PBS and, and Netflix and stuff, it was always after the fact that we had made them. And so we were trying to figure out how we could create some sort of um, system where we could keep control of our movies, both economically and artistically, and also build community for people to actually watch them. And so um, we were we were really inspired by Stuart, this is Stuart here, um, and let me see if I can find this. This is Kevin Kelly. Um, oh. Kevin Kelly's in this thumbnail, but I don't know if we can actually see him. Kevin Kelly had this amazing idea that I'm sure some people have heard, um, which is that you only need 1,000 true fans in order to make a living as an independent artist. And he wrote this book. It was about 1,000 true fans, or maybe it was a blog post that later became a book. And the idea was that if you're a musician or if you are an artist um, or a photographer or whatever your creative pursuits are, you really only need 1,000 true fans in order to make a living. And he kind of, you know, roughly figured that you need about $100,000 in modern American society to make your art and do your thing. And so if you had 1,000 fans, they could each chip in um, X dollars and, and voila, you could have your uh, $100,000 stipend for you to be a creator. And um, we took that to heart and realized that, you know, this is what he's actually saying is if we actually created an NFT, a utility NFT, we could create a system where we would have our 1,000 true fans and we can make whatever movie we damn well please. And that really excited us. And so let's, let's move on to what we're working on today. And so we were invited um, to, well, let me just take a step back and say that we, uh, we, we realized that the problem with the, um, what we had done with Stuart Brand and this movie that we had made was that it wasn't really in dialogue with crypto. It had crypto sort of in the, in the ethos and there was crypto in the, the blood of, uh, of, of the DNA of, of Stuart Brand, but it wasn't really their cradle to grave. Um, from the very beginning. And so when we started thinking about what we were going to work on afterwards, we realized that DAOs and crypto were a movement that was sort of bubbling up that hadn't been represented. Um, I mean, if you ask people who are a sort of DAO affiliated, everyone knows what a DAO is, but the general public doesn't understand what it visually is and how to grok it. And so we see our role as movie makers is taking obscure ideas like in this case, they're trying to resurrect the woolly mammoth or in the pursuit of defeating aging so that we can all be immortal or in the pursuit of science education so that we you know, can understand that climate change is real. Like in the case of Bill Nye, as he's on this campaign to educate everyone about climate change and about evolution, we, our goal is to bring ideas to, to life in cinema so people can visualize it, people can understand it, and people can grok it. And uh, we realized that DAOs had this gap of understanding. Um, like, what does a DAO look like? How are DAOs organized? What it, would it be like if I joined a DAO? Um, and so we realized that we could actually provide a role in, in to visualizing this. So fast forward um, this morning, actually, this, this very morning as, uh, as I speak to you here, um, we were invited to the residency called, um, put on by this group called Friends with Castles, which is a DAO. And what they're trying to do is build, take old royal relics like castles and palaces and turn them over to the people to create, uh, to democratize them. And so we had heard that this was happening and um, I'm now going to navigate away, away from Stuart Brand for a moment so I can show you DAO Palace. So th here's this extraordinary place of these extraordinary collection of people um, uh, that I'm not going to actually show because I don't I didn't get the the permission. But the um, this is a public website, so if you are curious, you can go down to Dow Palace. And the idea is they're going to create a two week residency in Germany to build a Dow for turning royal relics into uh, entities that can become productive. Uh, democratized uh, sort of laboratories of experimentation and they're going to be there for 14 days and we asked them if we could make a movie during those 14 days to see what uh, what becomes of this DAO um, and they were worried about the optics of what it's like to have uh, to invite filmmakers into a place that's seen as this like kind of old school 
crypto or sorry, old school space of this Royal Academy and to, and to have like a crypto spin on it. They were worried that they were going to be portrayed as, um, you know, unfavorably. But um, our point was that we can actually create a documentary that shows how these ideas can actually liberate um, through, through the use of, um, you know, of tokenized economics and government, governance protocols, you can actually create a DAO that could be available for everyone. So the idea that, that you know, these palaces are now walled off gardens where you have, they're treated like museums where the royal family can sleep or where they're, they're kind of going, they're kind of rotting. They're kind of, I don't want to say rotting, but they're, they're not the, the temples of innovation that they once were. There's no Royal Academy of Sciences that's operating in these castles. They're, they're kind of just museums that are dull. And so what they wanted to do was to take this extraordinary space and to create a year-round residency, inviting crypto people um, to, to participate. And so we, we, we were completely taken by the space visually and by the cast of characters. And you know what? I'm going to break what I said earlier. I'm going to go ahead and share some of the people that are there because, again, this is a public website. Um, but I did not get permission to share their likeness, so I'm feeling um, a little skittish about it. But, again, I think this will probably be okay. So we have people that are representing um, – uh, this is a real-life royal. We have people who are hackers, coders, people who are involved in various DAO communities, various NFT communities. Uh, we have fashion designers. we got uh, cypherpunks. Um, we got economists, um, everybody who is involved in some avenue of Web3 is going to be represented. And it's going to be a global community from seven, I think from six continents, not seven, because the seventh is Antarctica. And there aren't any crypto people, as I know of, in Antarctica. <laughs> Maybe one day they will be there. Um, and, uh, and so for 14 days, we're going to make a portrait of this DAO coming to life. And what we hope to do is to illustrate through our ideas what a DAO is and how they or how they self-organize and how they share ideas with themselves and each other. Um, and, uh, and it's sort of a portrait of uh, ideas. And so each one of these characters, there's going to be 38 of them represented. We're going to follow them around with our cameras in a respectful way, uh, granted full access, um, to learn about who the, the, the sort of the new uh, innovators, the new entrepreneurs, the new artists of this era um, and, and give them a public platform that is on par with, uh, with, with um, the silver screen and with, uh, you know, on par with other Hollywood films, um, films that go to Sundance and end up on Netflix and are shown in theaters. We, we think um, crypto has yet to have its silver screen moment. And so we hope we can bring it to life so that Web3 is, uh, is documented. Um, I should mention that this is not going to be like a, you know, a sycophantic portrait or um, sort of a, you know, a Kool-Aid drinking portrait. We hope that we can create something that's lively and dynamic um, and it is sort of a, a, a wrestling of ideas. And so we hope that we can um, bring something to the fore that um, th that engages with the, the criticisms of DAOs or the misunderstandings so that we can sort of clear up a lot of these misunderstandings and um, create a portrait um, that is true and authentic to what crypto can be. Um, and so we're, we're really excited and, and jazzed about participating um, in the Dow Palace filming, but also we hope um, when we, uh, if we are lucky enough to, to join this fab fabulously talented group of um, people in this residency, we could use you guys for inspiration and ideas on how we shape this. Um, we we uh, are having uh, we're, we're having, I guess this is going to take place in July. So we, we have to do our research. We have to, we're going to form a DAO ourselves. We need to know like what the community looks like and how, and how to represent it adequately. Um, and so anyways, we, we, we hope that we can use, um, everyone as a resource, uh, to help us on this journey to make sure that we, we represent this right, because you don't get, you only get so many chances to, um, to, to be the first representation. And, um, hopefully if this film takes off and, and goes gangbusters like we hope it will. We want to make sure we get it right. And so we're hoping that the Forefront community can help us out on, along this journey. Okay, I will, I will go ahead and close this. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Jason and Structure Films. Forefront fam, if you have any questions, comments, insights, feel free to light up the chat window. 
So Jason, uh, to clarify, you're, you're thinking for the residency to actually set up the DAO and then you'll be pursuing funding for the DAO Palace documentary? Is that like the first, is that one of the big goals of yes. your residency if you were to be selected? Yeah, exactly. So the idea is that we would, we need to set up a DAO ourselves. We, uh, we you know, we want to make this film with the community. And so it's, it's only appropriate that that we become a DAO in order to represent DAOs. And then um, we, we, yeah, funding, yeah, would, would happen in the next 30 days. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're bullish on our options just because we've made some friends along the way and, and feel that um, we're, 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 what we're asking for is, is not insurmountable. So we're hoping to f raise funds um, in the next 30 days. Of course, if we can't do that, then the idea goes to seed and we, we can't make it happen. But um, we're, uh, you know, it's an experimentation. And I should mention that our last movie, or not our last movie, the movie before, uh, Bill Nye, we actually ended up funding that entirely on Kickstarter from the people and, and the community. So we, we, we've had a track record of uh, reaching out to the fans and um, making movies alongside the fans. So we, we hope we can do the same. Amazing. Uh, just, I know this would only be an estimate, but do you have an idea of how much you would need to raise? It like, say like, obviously there's a continuum of like an ideal range. Yeah. This is what I can do my entire vision if I get this much and I don't have to cut back if I get this much. What's sort of your ideal raise? <laughs> yeah, sure. So, well, the good thing is, is that all we need to do is raise money for the production. The real money in making a movie is actually in the editing, which can take like nine months to 12 months and, and distrib distribution and all that jazz. That's where like, you know, I guess just the ballpark is like generally movies cost between like 1.2 and 1.5 million. That's what we've done the last like two times. And uh, w w that's like the whole long tail. But production is actually really cheap. <laughs> it's just pennies because compared to $1.2 million because we, um, David and I shoot it ourselves. Uh, he does the, he does the camera and I do audio. We keep it really small and scrappy. So we're just paying for our time and then a few other people. So of course we have to pay for housing. And we've never stayed in a palace before. <laughs> we've never like got to get plane tickets and have a crew of five people. So we're ballparking this to be, I guess, depending on where current ETH prices lie anywhere between like, you know, 90 to a hundred ETH, um, that we hope to do just for the production. And then, um, the other $1.3 million we will raise later. Mm, got it. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for that estimate. Jack in the way has a question for you. What's a challenge you anticipate as you and Jason form this doc DAO? It's a great question. So the, the biggest, well, the, okay. The biggest challenge is we're in brave new world here. We don't have any experience making a DAO. So I, you know, making a, <laughs> A film is was one thing, um, but to to create a DAO is like that's like we're we're sort of a, each film is a startup company, um, so we have to do that. Of course, that's the product we're shipping is the film. But on top of that, we have to figure out how to get the governance right, how to get the tokenomics right, how to create you know um, a utility membership NFTs so that people feel like they they have a token that they can um, own regardless of how the movie turns out. Maybe they hate the movie, but they at least have this ticket. Uh, this token that actually allows for that to be tradable and to have utility that they like and love and for, and the, hopefully they'll like the art. I mean, as you mentioned that we are, at, we, we are artists um, who are, you know, making an experimental movie and we, we expect these NFTs to be awesome. But at the end of the day, we've never really done this before. So the, it's the, it's the launching of it that it makes me really nervous. That's the biggest problem is, is how to get the, how to get the Dow right. Cause we've, we've, we've had a decade and a half of making movies and we've done that just fine. But the Dow part is going to be the biggest challenge. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. I had a question about the Kickstarter that you did for We Are As Gods. Was it We Are As Gods where you raised uh, the funds from Kickstarter? Or was that, it or it was Bill, uh, Bill and I, we raised with Kickstarter. Okay. Was that like you starting from fresh, like a blank slate in terms of community building of the people that actually pitched in and sponsored the film? Or was that you kind of tailwinding off of your community that you've built up over the years? Third option, tailwinding off of Bill Nye's community. So we actually uh, used, we, we uh, you know, Bill is a beloved figure in American psyche and the global psyche to a certain degree. There's other people on the right um, or, you know, folks who deny climate and such as they don't believe in evolution, hate Bill Nye. But the, the very, you know, there we have a ton of people that we, we have our own following, obviously, and we have our own 
um, you know, we are, we are, we built a community, but Bill's community was what we really used um, to coattail uh, on, on the Kickstarter. But he wasn't really involved in the Kickstarter. Um, he lent his, his image and he blessed it and said, yes, go forth. And we, we shot a video where he said, this sounds like a fabulous idea. But it, that was all of our blood, sweat, and tears. Like, we were, we were the ones who muscled that across the finish line. And it ended up, we set out to make uh, $650,000. Um, and then we ended up uh, cresting uh, around eight eighty, I believe is what it was. Eight, 880000 mm-hmm. that went And that, that we made the whole movie with that. And then we, then we, cut, we needed to raise a little more money at the end just to do post-production because that's where all the money's at. But anyways, we, we were able to make the whole thing through community engagement and everyone was really excited. And when we had the, when we launched, I mean, Kickstarter is proto, uh, you know, DAO is proto. It's the, it's sort of like, you can see communities forming. You see how people toss a few shekels in just to have skin in the game. And you see how things develop, whether they're products or ideas or, pro, or, or projects. So when we heard about, you know, this, what you could do with with blockchain tech we're like oh this is a grown-up version of kickstarter this is kickstarter realized because kickstarter is just a web 2 platform that where you get no equity where you there's no accountability where you know you're just sort of fans and they even call them backers which i think is so condescending it's like backers why not participators like why why not producers like uh, we look at this as you know we're all going to make a film together wagami and everyone is going to be a part of the engine and uh, Kickstarter was just like backing, like we're gonna do this thing, and you stand back there. That's not how we see this. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Jason. Uh, thank you so much for appearing with us today and presenting your story and your project to the forefront, fam. We really appreciate you and uh, David. Send our best to him. We'll have to say goodbye to you now because we have one more finalist to invite up on the stage. Thank you, thank you, my friend. Thank you so much again. Bye bye. Take good care. All right, forefront, fam. Thank you for sticking in with us. We have one more amazing fire finalist to introduce to you and this is marcus marcus come up to marcus, stage marcus. my friend hello hello can you hear me yes i can hear you how are you awesome great great how are you doing oh my goodness this has been a um a marathon session, and we still have uh, Forefront Fam hanging out with us in the community. So it's a, it's an honor. It's been an amazing meet and greet today. Have you been watching? I have been. Have you I've been, been tuning in the whole time, which is amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So Forefront Fam, it is my honor to introduce you to Marcus. Marcus is a lover of life, community builder, and impact leader with a diverse background across education, healthcare, climate, creative production, impact investing, fintech and Web3. Driven by deploying and scaling equity-led technology leverage solutions that address the pressing challenges of our time. Marcus is currently working on Cohere, a member-owned network of regenerative innovation hubs powered by Web3 infrastructure. Cohere provides spaces that empower innovators to create regenerative solutions that enable a new way of living. By providing access to abundant resources, supportive community, and a collaborative environment, Cohere empowers innovators to birth a new collective reality. Additionally, Marcus is working on Lamina Pop, a social enterprise backed by the University of Stanford, Cambridge, and Habitat for Humanity that provides access to low-cost housing in developing countries. In fact, this was hat-tipped earlier by Nico, and Marcus enjoys long walks on the beach and low gas fees. Marcus, my friend, the stage is yours. Awesome. Well, um, it's really, really great to be here. And yeah, I wanted to, I'll be sort of working with some visuals and slides here. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. And I know it's been sort of a, a long uh, day here. So um, I wanted to just kick things off with a little bit of a perhaps meditation. Let me know if you can see my screen. Um, Can you see the screen? Yes, we yes? can see it. Okay, awesome, cool. So let me just load up this presentation. So um, first, thank you for the sort of flexibility um, on you know the timing and everything. We've had a huge hurricane come through here and I'll try to be as concise as possible. Um, I know we've all probably got to head off at the top of the hour, so I'll, I'll flow through things um, as succinctly as possible. But 
Um, yeah, my name is Marcus and I'm a solar punk movement weaver. So just as a preface, what is solar punks? And it's been amazing to already see a few um, fellow W3CR finalists allude to solar punks. It's super, super exciting. So really solar punks are a genre, an art movement, a burgeoning art movement in the sense that we are creating what the future would look like. Um, what would the future look like if we really came to address the contemporary challenges of our time? Um, the social environmental challenges and really emphasizing human impact on the environment, uh, sustainability and regeneration. And what if we truly address climate change and pollution? Like what kind of world could we live in? So I wanted to just kick things off with a quick um, visualization and meditation. So it'll just be a few minutes here. And the essence of this is really just to sort of ground ourselves in um, in the present moment. We've been in front of our screen all day and really just want to sort of reconnect us with um, this visceral sense of what it means to be a solar punk. So we'll just take a quick moment here and I invite those of you that are tuning in live or listening to the recording afterwards to just close your eyes and tune into your breath. Just take a few deep breaths here and just all the tension from the computer and the back pain, just allow it to wash away with every inhale and exhale that you bring into your body and let out. And I want you to just quickly just sort of wrap your head around all the amazing presentations that we've had come through and just begin to let them go, begin to allow them to flow through you, begin to really integrate what has come through most notably and for the emphasis of this presentation, solar punk futures. So what do we want the world to look like? Were we to really address the pressing social environmental challenges Dwayne the Jock Ronson um, brought up the question of how real is it that we could really address these problems? So we'll just take a few moments of silence here. And while we do that, I want you to just begin to imagine what would the world look like were we to truly address these challenges? What if we could overcome climate change and inequality and uh, economic inequity, water pollution? So we'll just take a few moments of silence here and really tap into that image. What does your house look like? What does your neighborhood look like? How are you spending your days in a solar punk future? Now I want you to begin to imagine not what your world looks like, because all of us sitting here are carrying an immense privilege with us. But what would other people's worlds look like? What would a solar punk world for others also look like? Not just for ourselves. And we'll just wrap up here in about 30 seconds, but really just feel, feel what it would mean to live in a solar punk. World. Feel what it means to be a solar punk. Embody that. That's where we begin. And slowly, as your mind is easing and sort of tuning into a greener, fairer, cleaner world, I want you to come back and just return to this space of shared consciousness as I get to have the honor of your time um, over the course of the next 15 minutes or so to tune in. So we'll open our eyes um, and I do have a, a brief exercise and we won't necessarily do it now, but I would invite you to just share with me what a solar punk future looks like. Um, doesn't necessarily have to happen now, at your earliest convenience, um, feel free to just tweet out solar pump futures are dot dot dot. And uh, I invite you to share what you visualize with the hashtag W3CR or tag me and I'll share my details later because I would want to connect with more and more solar punk. So that's the whole idea here. So who am I? Um, I am a brother. I am a son. Uh, I'm a creator. Um, and just deeply inspired by the work that um, we are all doing to to create fairer worlds, more creative, more artistic worlds. And I think we're having some issues here loading some images, but 
Um, here's just a few sort of pictures of me as a, as a younger child, really tuning into um, growing up in a community environment. Uh, and that really has planted the seed for me. And growing up in Guatemala, a country mired by inequality, a country that is most susceptible to climate change and living in a failed nation state where, you know, the state has been the perpetrator of violence, of injustice. I have been so drawn towards what would the world look like if I could truly root it in these other sort of aspects of my life that I got to experience. So community and family have been so important to me. But not only that, the Guatemalans are so innovative, so entrepreneurial, so, you know, willing to cross borders, I mean, cross entire countries to live a better life. And if something, you know, if leaving your entire being and existence in one place and traveling through deserts and rivers and forests to live a better life doesn't say something about the innovative capacity to think of a better future. I mean, I, I don't know what does, right? And at the same time, through that process, so much art has been birthed and regenerative futures have come forward into life. Um, and that's really what's inspired me to land today and, and why I am here with you all today, um, sharing my vision for a solar punk future beginning in Guatemala, because this is my domain, the, the place where I can begin to create an impact and a ripple across wider society, but my intention with um, the W3CR and just generally speaking, I mean, um, is to create a, a solar punk future and not just a future for myself, but I intentionally use the word plural futures because it's not just my future, it's the future of every being. We all have our own future to step into and to integrate and to embody. So um, with that said, it's, I mean, that's really the seed here of, of what I want to bring forward. and you know, materially speaking, what does that look like, right? How how do we create futures that are rooted in environmentalism, that are rooted in community, that are rooted in leveraging technology? And really the two sort of vehicles through which I'm creating this is um, Cohere and, you know, Caroline briefly touched on this earlier, but we're creating regenerative innovation hubs that are member owned and powered by Web3. I'll touch on that a little bit in a second, um, but also Lamina Pop. And what we're doing in Lamina Pop is creating housing solutions for those in the disenfranchised um, communities um, and we're doing so by creating we take people from living in these really very um, poor living conditions to these very solar punk-esque sort of buildings that are a third of the cost cheaper to build than any leading low-cost housing solution um, we are being backed by some incredible sort of supporters um, and this is the moment, Caroline, I'm not sure if you're able to share um, the video I had loaded up. Otherwise, I'm happy to to, to share on, on my end. Marcus, are you there? Marcus? Hold on, Forefront fam, because I can't hear Marcus. If, if anyone can hear Marcus, can you chat with me in the window? Can't. Okay, Dwayne, thank you. Okay. Marcus, we can't hear you. I'm showing a, a warning that your, your internet speed is too low. Okay, so Marcus has dropped off. Same, no video. Yeah. Let's see if Marcus can rejoin. Thanks for thanks for your help, Dwayne, Nate, and super excited. Uh, we we could not hear you, Marcus. We could not see you. I mean, we I heard a little bit of it, but you kept dropping off, and I was getting a warning message from Riverside that your internet speed is uh, is too your internet is too low. Do you would you be able to connect to a stronger Wi-Fi or internet connection? Okay, let's try this again, Forefront fam. Hello. Hey. Hi. Hello. Where did where did things get Hi. cut off? 
Um, after you said you were talking about Cohere, um, and then and then after that, your your video cut out, your voice cut out, and okay. the slides. So okay. I'm thinking if your if your internet is is really super spotty, um, there's no stronger connection. I'm concerned that we're just going to keep experiencing the same problems as you go on. Sure. Um, let me uh, let me just try sharing this video just because I, I feel it's um, super important. And if it doesn't work, then um, please, please. Then, then no worries. But yeah, unfortunately, internet can be somewhat spotty here in Guatemala. So um, I wanted to share with you all a little bit of the sort of reality in which people live here in Guatemala. So this is a previous dwelling um, in which a family lived and the sort of construction method that we're using um, with lamina pulp is we use two corrugated tin sheets that are riveted together. Um, we then place them as uh, load-bearing structures due to the way that they distribute their weight. Um, you can see me here building the house. Um, and then as far as the um, what the construction ends up looking like is this, this building, and it costs about $5,000 to build, um, and they're being built in some of the most sort of marginalized communities across Guatemala. This is the, the end structure. So you can imagine the sort of huge, huge change and impact this has on people's lives. So um, this is Juan, who is one of the uh, grantees of, of the house and just sharing a little bit of his family and, and the impact this had on his life and his family's life. Um, I won't share the audio just because of the, the quality. Um, but this is his family there and really just had like an amazing impact on their lives. So it's been really incredible to sort of bridge this very cutting edge uh, technology of Web3 and bring it to uh, these communities and this, these disenfranchised sort of families. So, um, yeah, just wanted to, to kind of share a little bit of the work, very uh, tangibly speaking. Um, and I, I'll stop sharing my screen there. But um, that's a bit of the, the work that, that we've been doing with Lamina Pop and um, the, the essence of um, the work we do. And you know, I think one of the key lessons that I took away from um, the work with with just growing up again in Guatemala was that the only way that we can achieve systemic change is by leveraging community, right? So as Forefront has recognized um, the essence through which we are going to create these futures is by coming together, right? And so we just hosted our collab um, in Guatemala, which was a month-long experience where we brought down innovators in Web3, experience design, design thinking, governance, um, to co-create um, the Cohere DAO. Uh, so here on the left, you can see a sort of little image of what our nightly gatherings look like as we were building out um, the Cohere DAO. And you know, one of the questions that was brought up in the application process and this interview process is like, what are, what are questions that are currently pressing you as a creator? And you know, I, I'm a firm believer that life is an endless stream of questions. Whatever questions you come to and you answer just opens up a you know a dozen more questions, right? And so ultimately we can live this life in pursuit an endless pursuit of questions. But for me the true essence and the response to that is rather than trying to ceaselessly pursue these questions is to tap into myself and to recognize myself that the only way to achieve like true sort of non-fleeting questions is to begin to, with a change within. That's why I wanted to begin this whole presentation with a little meditation. When we find stillness and peace within is when we can reflect that out into the world, when we can build out solar pump futures. Because if we're constantly living in this sort of uh, endless trap of consumption and consumerism and scarcity mentalities, we won't be able to shift towards new futures. So, and ultimately, that brings me to the W3CR. Um, my intentions here are really just to create a deep sense of admiration for ourselves at the individual level, level for our community, um, for those around us, and for Pachamama. Um, Pachamama is a Quechua word for Mother Earth. Um, I've been so inspired listening to all of you um, sort of share what you're, each of you is individually working on. I was so touched and just amazed to see the solar punk be brought up multiple times but you know i think i see myself as an artist of of society in a way and and believe that decentralized societies are the future decentralized regenerative societies are the future and the only way to achieve that will be in community in leveraging art that all of you are so beautifully doing 
um, and and I'm so incredibly honored to to be here with you. And uh, ultimately, my intentions with uh, the residency will be to um, build out a few homes. So we'll be building out a couple of homes um, with uh, with Lamina Pop, and um, the grant, the forefront grant, will essentially go towards that. Uh, we'll continue to leverage and build out the community of change makers that are stepping into Web3 across Guatemala through our next coherence lab, which will take place in September. And I extend a very, very warm invitation to the Forefront family to join us. Um, I'm also curating and supporting in the development of ETH Barcelona, which will be one of the largest solar punk Web3 gatherings in the history of mankind thus far. So, so excited to sort of see this emerge and come to light. Um, and most importantly for me as well is continue to integrate diversity and equity and inclusion into Cohere and um, extend this, this very, very open and warm invitation to the Forefront family. Um, and so with that, just want to say thank you for your time. Um, that is, again, I want to be conscious of time here, so I'll sort of slow things down there. But um, yeah, and sorry about the connection issues. I'm unfortunately a, a struggle when dealing with things down here in Guatemala, but here we are. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. It seems to be it seems to be holding strong when it's just you talking versus doing a presentation. But my friend, I, I encourage you if you'd like to share, maybe shoot a loom of you with your screens, with your slides, and narrating over it. Feel free to share it with us, and we'll we'll share it with the community and a part of the creator profiles. Um, but thank you, thank you for being patient with us and, and taking us through uh, your vision. Um, so, fam, I'm gonna hop over to the chat and let's see if we have any questions. Rachel is saying, love this, Marcus, seeing parallels to the work that needs to be done in the Philippines. And Rachel is asking, would love to hear how you have been balancing staying connected to the physical world while also working more heavily in Web3 and the digital space? Mm, that's a brilliant question. And um, I, I think it's about setting very clear boundaries um, with the digital space. So generally after 6 p.m., I shut off phones, laptop, everything, weekends, Sundays, completely off. I think it's, you know, it's so easy to be endlessly connected with Web3. I mean, you open up Twitter and it's like this amazing sort of like interaction and new friends and all this sort of constantly coming through. So the way I do that is just by being very strict with myself and my time and just saying, you know, X days, X times, just shut everything off and just be very present. Um, and, and that's been a sort of huge, huge help, definitely. Beautiful question, Rachel. Thank you. Anyone else, Forefront fam, any other questions for Marcus and what he's building with Lemon Up Up and Cohere? Solar Punk. Thank you, Nico. Amazing presentation. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, Nico's a part of um, a uh, group that we're starting called Solar Punk AF. Um, so uh, we're hosting week weekly conversations. Feel free to reach out on, on Discord and um, we can connect there and can share with you the Telegram link. Amazing. Yeah, there's so much energy yeah. around solar punk uh, with Web3 right now. It's incredible. Yes, Rachel saying, yes, please share the link. Okay, okay the link. there you go. Awesome, solar punk AF. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Marcus, for sharing that. Any other questions, comments, friends? You can also do a live call in to help Marcus and me round out the show. Are there a lot of folks down in, there in Guatemala that you're finding were already natively interested in solar punk, or are you playing more the role of like onboarding? Yeah, I, yeah, I'm oftentimes kind of the only person in the room um, that has, you know, sort of in theory, like as a solar punk, as a name sort of come across uh, the movement in a way. But um, I mean, solar punk is so much beyond its sort of tagline. Um, it's just like this like visceral feeling of, as Nico was sharing earlier, wanting to live deep in community in regenerative futures, um, because at least for me, it's become incredibly evident that the nation state is not going to be the one that is going to steward a regenerative future, right? I mean, there's a reason we've had 26 COPs, conferences of the parties, um, and we're not seeing the situation 
uh, improve uh, drastically, right? And so it's like if if I can't rely on this sort of vehicle to to create that change, then it starts within and it starts in the community. So there are a lot of community-led movements really trying to steward um, more regenerative futures, which is incredibly exciting and, and honoring to see. Amazing, amazing. Well, thank you. Oh, yes, Rachel. Amazing. Uh, Rachel, have you been working with indigenous communities in Guatemala? Beautiful question. Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, so I come from an, an indigenous background myself. Um, so sort of being able to tie that into the um, local sort of community engagement that we have across Cohere is super, super important. Um, Lamina Pop's entire mission is to create equitable, accessible housing for um, disenfranchised communities. Oftentimes, um, they are either indigenous or of indigenous background. So, yeah, my whole sort of life has been dedicated to um, working with, uh, you know, marginalized communities. And obviously that includes, uh, unfortunately, people of indigenous background. Thank you for your question, Rachel. I'm so excited to connect further with you. Marcus, what's the, what's the next step? It seems like Lemon Up Up had funded by Stanford, Cambridge, Habitat for Humanity. What's sort of like the next milestone for, for you and the team at Lemon Up Up to begin to scale? I know that you said you were super excited to announce that two homes are in the works to be built. Um, what is that next step that you have to achieve with the organization before? Oh, whoopsie. I think we probably... Let's wait a couple moments, fam, see if Marcus can come back. Oh, yes, Nate, thank you. The PO app, if you scroll up, if you scroll up, and for folks that perhaps had got kicked out and had to come back on, you can't scroll up. So uh, just DM uh, Nate, Gecko, G-E-K-O, on Discord, if you have been on and you didn't see that Google Form link, but the POAP secret word is going to be, there it is again. POAP secret word is imagination. Beautiful. I love how we're, Nate is picking themes from our meet and greets. And there is going to be a surprise for everyone that collects all the POAPs and that attends all the sessions. So you definitely want to collect these. Let's wait a couple more minutes. If anyone wants to call in to join me, chat, feel free. This has been a uh, marathon session. We're not quite yet to where we were with the open studio. We're about 15 minutes less than we were with the open studio. But thank you so much for hanging in there with us. Maybe wait two more minutes to see if Marcus comes in. If not, we'll close the live stream and we will welcome you back. Different link, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We have some amazing, the last four finalists you do not want to miss the last four finalists. All right, friends, maybe we just say so long for now, just for now, because it's been a while. Perhaps Marcus won't be able to come back. But we thank Marcus. Marcus, wherever you are, we thank you. Thank you so much for bringing your beautiful energy and passion and your vision for a solar punk future in Guatemala, starting in Guatemala for the entire world. Thank you to all the finalists. Thank you to you, Forefront fam. And we will sign off now, and we hope to see you back here in uh, several hours, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. See you then, fam. Bye-bye, everyone.